At Rackspace, we are uh, helping lots of companies build on cloud, cloud infrastructure. Your companies are probably sitting on the cloud, at least in part, and these clouds are getting more and more complex. You're getting more and more servers, more and more APIs, more and more data flows, more and more people working on these clouds, and you're losing control. Where, well, Liatis, a company I'm seeing next, lets you do application-based networking. It's really interesting how they're helping companies take control of their cloud infrastructure. Who are you? I'm Pascal Vicablon, founder and CEO of Liatis. And I used to do research and work for high performance network in high demanding application context since more than 20 years. Wow. Very cool. And what does Liatis do? Because right? it's application-based what? Uh, Liatis is providing solution for application-defined networking. Our main goal is to deliver elastic networking for cloud customers. Who is application-defined networking for? Who, who needs this? We are targeting cloud infrastructure customers who are deploying uh, application and relying on the cloud and struggling with finding bottleneck issues and remediating to them. It probably is for a developer or IT person who has hundreds of servers or at least dozens of servers. It, yes. If you only have one server, it's probably not needed. You, you probably are feeling more and more pain as you, your systems get more and more complex, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, running an application in a cloud environment is, can be very tricky when you have more than 10 uh, instances uh, and you need to uh, d discover, uh, troubleshoot, test the different performance of the elements which are aggregating in this cloud environment. Uh, so we are helping people who are mainly developers and who are not necessarily network uh, experts. And for them, uh, the invisibility, the complexity of the uh, cloud network uh, make this, the operation very uh, difficult. Very cool. And so it works on Amazon and Rackspace Cloud, and it, it's for companies that are built on t top of these cloud infrastructures, right? Yes, we started uh, with a public cloud environments. Uh, of course, the network can expand to also to private cloud scenarios. So this solution aim, uh, to uh, target hybrid uh, cloud, so private and public. Today we are delivering Cloud River in Amazon, and we are uh, focusing on implementing the uh, other uh, uh, provider compatibility uh, thanks to our adapters and also with private cloud solutions. Okay, so you don't yet support OpenStack, or are you going to support we OpenStack? We are working on, uh, today okay. it's not available to our customers, but uh, we are uh, developing the OpenStack version of CloudWeaver, which will enable uh, you know, a lot of enterprise, both in public cloud and private cloud environment, to benefit from uh, the CloudWeaver uh, features. So how do I implement Liatis? Is it a, a, another virtual cloud I have to put in? Is it something I have to load? Tell me how I get it. So uh, it's very simple. Uh, when you have an account, uh, for example, in Amazon, you will just give your credential. So CloudWeaver, uh, which is developed as a SaaS, is provided as a SaaS, will help you to uh, discover uh, your assets, will present in a very intuitive graphical user interface uh, the different assets you have in the cloud, and we automatically uh, discover the flows uh, between the different servers so you can understand who is talking to whom and eventually you can detect bottlenecks. Tell me about that user interface when I first started up. What is the flows and what, what should I be looking for on the screen? Okay, so first you can uh, look at the uh, topology map. So the topology map is giving you uh, the, the view of the different instances and the network uh, underlying network where they are connecting to, and you uh, uh, so you you see you know vi virtual machines uh, which becomes immediately uh, tangible. Uh, 
so you can manipulate with your mouse and you can move, for example, a, a virtual instance to another uh, availability zone in a click. You can also uh, uh, click on it and SSH or going, go directly to this machine and type your, uh, you know, uh, your favorite commands. And, uh, and you can also uh, set up or uh, uh, add a new resource from this um, dashboard. Uh, then the flow map is when you want to understand the activity uh, underneath. So uh, you activate what we call the collectors and you get uh, these communication patterns and eventually you click on the link, the new uh, link you have this, we have discovered, and you can see how much capacity you are using, what is the latency between these two VMs, and when you have you know, uh, uh, some uh, over, overload or uh, contention, you immediately see uh, in, on which link or on which uh, virtual instance it happened. So this is a, almost a new kind of analytics, isn't it? Yeah. So uh, Cloud Devices is combining uh, what we call the flow analytics with uh, adaptive orchestration. And we, we are providing this feedback loop which enable to not only understand what's happening but immediately remediate to the problem. Yeah, so you can see all sorts of things like servers filling up, server traffic is going way crazy or latency, there's a latency issue. Yes particularly if you have different availability zones or different zones, like you have a data, when you get to Rackspace, we have data centers in Hong Kong and London. Yeah. You probably can see, oh, there's yeah. a latency problem here, so you need to fix that so the code's closer together. Yes, exactly. And yeah. this is, you know, latency is uh, one of the major I issue uh, for uh, appli distributed application developers. And that's where you uh, can lose a lot of performance. And it's not so uh, obvious to detect it. So Cloudiver is monitoring in real time, uh, not just you know the laten latency between uh, instances, but what the flows uh, really experience during the you know, data movement. Yeah. So that's very important because that's where you understand exactly what happened. So um, the latency is one, the uh, 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 availability is, is also another one, and bandwidth, the capacity you can, you can use is, is really important, mainly when you are you know, moving data from one data center to another one. Yeah, no, that's mm -hmm. ac absolutely interesting. Um, uh, how much does this cost to implement for a, a, you know, a medium-sized company with a, maybe a 50 servers? You know, what, uh, so or how do you charge for it? Well, tell me, no, tell we, me how we, I we pay launched, for it. We launched the, uh, you know, the public beta uh, recently. And so today it's uh, free. So uh, anybody who wants to uh, uh, you know, get the, the value of CloudWeaver can just connect to CloudWeaver and get the, you know, and get these maps, so the topology map, the heat map, and the flow map, as well as all the actions, which are macro actions that we automate. So for example, if you want to configure a load balancer, you immediately click to uh, you know, the add load balancer or the existing load balancer, and you can reconfigure it, selecting the set of uh, instances you want to uh, allocate or to connect to this uh, load balancer. So how do you make money if, you're, if it's free? <laughs> no. <laughs> of course not free, it's, you know, you have a free trial yeah. and then is uh, the, the, the pricing is based on scale. Of course, if you have only 10 uh, instances, you will pay less than when you have a uh, hundred and it's also, as you can imagine, as we are doing analytics and orchestration, so you have part of the pricing which is based on the orchestration and it depends on, the, for example, on the number of clouds uh, we orchestrate and the other part is based on the analytics. So it's a combination of these uh, pricing models. So if I try it for free, can I figure out the pricing for my company? Because every company is going to yeah, be different. Yeah, you, yes, you will. Okay, you will. so I'll know what, what yes. the bill will be if I keep going. Exactly, okay. yeah. And it's, you know, the, the, it, it, it doesn't depend linearly with the number of VMs because uh, most of the time what we do, we help people to scale in and scale out the, and, and, and down their infrastructure. Yeah. So, you know, we encourage people to get more visibility and control, so we are not encouraging them to consume more resource. Yeah, and that, that gets into this. 
So it sounds like you're taking on a little bit like a uh, clef or uh, um, some of these automation tools to do things very, very quickly. Is that true? Yes, we, we automate, uh, first we automate the decision, which is uh, very unique. We have a model uh, underneath, which gives us a lot of information to uh, help the uh, developer to take the decision, and if he wants, it, it, we can automate for him. Uh, but we also go down to the, you know, the, the real actions that need to be done in the infrastructure, in the you know, physical infrastructure. We, we send the order to the API in order to you know, make this happen. Yeah, you, you told me about the three maps and talked a little bit about them. What were the three mapping kinds again? So the first map is a topology map. Okay. So you see your infrastructure and what is important is the geography and we also model the network underneath. Of course we are going to more virtualization of the network and uh, of course this network will be also manageable and provisionable in the near future. So we uh, integrate this already in Cloud River. Uh, so you will be able to manipulate the network from our uh, graphical user interface and also from our API. So if you need a load balancer, if you need security infrastructure, yes, and you, you can, can also uh, manage the links. If you have a provider providing you manageable links, you can do this from uh, Cloud River. Okay. And so that's the first map. The second map is a heat map. So the heat map helps you to understand what is the latency between all the different entities you have. So that's a full mesh. And it's, it's done you know, passively, so you, 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 you don't have uh, you know, too much traffic underneath to, to do this. And you don't have to test yourself. If, if I have some infrastructure on Amazon, and, and assuming your, your Rackspace connector comes out, and I have some on Rackspace, and then I have some in my own data center using OpenStack, um, can it see all of those pieces? Eventually? Yes, yes, that, that's oh, the target, that's cool. yes. And I can manage back and forth and I can see how oh, these servers on Amazon are slow, so move them over to Rackspace exactly. Cloud or vice versa. Exactly, exactly. Ooh. Because what is important for uh, the uh, you know, cloud customer, cloud infrastructure customers is to uh, be able to uh, adapt their environment to the needs and, and you know, differentiate. What they look for is competitive differentiation. And so we uh, abstract the infrastructure in a way that only the metrics which matter to them or to this you know, differentiation uh, are uh, highlighted. So Cloudiver is taking a lot of the complexity, you can imagine, yeah. it's not so trivial to you know, to manage and orchestrate all these different technologies. But at the end of the day, we really want the user to, you know, to be relieved of all this burden. Yeah. How are you funded? Tell me a little bit about the company you're building. So we started the company uh, uh, from INRIA. INRIA is a national institute for computer science in France, where I used to lead a lot of international initiatives. And uh, so they start funding us. And then we also uh, uh, have uh, some investor from France for Series A, and we are looking for a Series B in the, you know, in the future months. Very cool, and you just mm -hmm. uh, shipped the beta in January of yes. 2013? Yes. yes. And yes. so how has that been going? What have you learned? What, what shocking thing have you learned from shipping a product like this? Because this um, is pretty unique new uh, infrastructure manager, right? Yes, uh, so we have, uh, I would say, fans. Even you know, people who are traditionally very uh, script uh, oriented, they say, wow, it's because the, uh, the, the UI we are providing is um, very new, you know, in, completely unusual for some op, you know, IT ops or net ops. And, and for us, it was very important. Today, people have iPhone, iPad, uh, and when they see the, the UI, they say, wow, it's for us. Yeah. <laughs> so we can have, we can access to the charts, we can manipulate, so we have made the thing so intuitive that anybody can access to this. But even, you know, the real, you know, uh, uh, traditional script-oriented people say, oh yeah, I can do a lot, I can see, and also I can show to my boss what happened. So now everybody 
as access to the to the to the cloud and it's not uh, foggy yep. it's real well i'm looking forward to it and we we want it on the rackspace cloud sure do you have any idea of when the rackspace cloud is going to be ready to use um in in you know, it depends on uh, the, the acceleration we can get with our funding, but in, in you know, few months, we have developed uh, you know, the adapter, what we call the cloud adapter in a way, so we can immediately uh, adapt to different clouds. So maybe we will not have all the features for Rackspace immediately, but we can do the adaptation very quickly. Very cool. And so we uh, find more information at liatis.com, L-Y-A-T-I-S-S.com? Exactly. Very cool. Thank you so much for coming Thank out. Thank you and very talking much. Bye-bye.